1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, for a little while you have had to suffer, suffer great, all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith may be proven, <laughs> genuine, and may result in praise, glory, and honor to Christ when he's revealed. And again, the difficulties that we face, uh, there's a, a multitude of difficulties that, that we face. Uh, the car broke down, Lord, what am I gonna do? Uh, the paycheck didn't arrive this week, Lord, what am I gonna do? The neighbors are cranky, Lord, what am I gonna do? You know, on and on and on and on it goes. That, uh, that's, and that's what he's talking about, that's part of the difficulties. But God always comes back and uses those difficulties to grow us. That's, that's a test for us. He's, he's growing us. He's expanding. He's stretching uh, our faith. And I think of the story of Jonah. And, uh, oh my goodness. You know, uh, he, he says over in chapter 2, verse 1, that, when I lost all, I once again turned to God. Can you imagine? Just go with me just a minute. Can you imagine what he must have been thinking? That he was supposed to, he knew God had called him to go one place, and because he didn't want to, he went to another place. And then all of a sudden, he finds that the seas are tur turmoil, and they throw him overboard. Well, you all know the story about here come the big whale and swallowed him up. What do you think he was thinking about that when he was down inside that whale, dodging all those dead fish and all the lines <laughs> and the crud that, that's down? What do you think he was thinking about? I see why he come back to, to that verse. Yeah, really. <laughs> he finally realized. <laughs> he finally realized when I have lost when I've lost all. Well, I mean that's pretty much hitting the bottom, isn't it? In the, in the, in the big whale's belly. That's not my first choice. <laughs> but <laughs> again, how many of us end up in the whale's belly? That's one of my questions. How many of us end up there? Not many. But God uses all situations, just as he used, used those situations in Jonah's life. It caused him to come back and realize and come back to God. Okay, God, I surrender. But what happened when he went to Nineveh? You know, a revival broke out. God blessed it because that's that's what God was trying to teach <coughs> Noah to do was to obey what I'm telling you because I've already gone over there. I've already prepared those people. And it's your time. I want you to go. And because he didn't, God had to, to teach him a little lesson. And, you know, again, God teaches, teaches us all kinds of lessons. And if we're only open and perceptive to what, what God is trying to teach us, and how do we do that? How do we, how do we gain that perception? It's through this relationship. The relationship of love is where we develop those perceptions so that God can speak into our heart. <clears throat> Isaiah says, 40, chapter 48, verse 10, I have refined you through not of silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. Well, what is a furnace of affliction? How many have been tested in the furnace of affliction? I hope not many of us, but I'm sure all of us. If any of you are like I am, sometimes the first time, well, I sometimes think Noah was, it was tested in the furnace. I mean, come on, down there in the wheel, belly of the whale, hello. That's uh, uh, pretty close to the furnace. Because that's what I was talking about, the furnace of affliction. That's when the heat's really on. That's when you've got to have that check to make the rent payment. That's when you've got to say, yes, I'll, I'll go to the foreign land to be a missionary. It, you know, all those kind of things. That's when the heat's on. That's when God gets our, really gets our attention. And you know, God comes back and says, in all of these things, as we begin to 
think about it, pray about it, complain about it. God comes back to the thing about, you know, guys, just rejoice. I've got it. Chill out. I've got your I've got your back. And I don't know about you, but every time, every time, without exception, that's been true in my life. God has always had my back. Every time. He's, he, he's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And to be with us always. And, and oh, how true he has proven, proven to be in that part. And uh, one little one little phrase. I want you to repeat this after me. I want you to remember this time and time again. If God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. Remember that. Write that down. Now you can take that to the Because that is, oh, that's so true. If he, he brings that temptation, and, and we all heard the cliche, if he, he closes this door, he always opens a couple of windows. And that's the way he does things with us. He, if we follow his lead, if we listen to him, that's, that's where he, he just leads us. And I've titled this, this, if you want to call it a message, I've, I've titled this, What's Your Score? And so right now it's test time. Okay? I want you to ask and answer questions. And just in your own mind, score yourself from zero to ten. And what, this question is, how quickly do I praise him when things are going wrong? If it's never, you're probably zero to one. If it's sometimes, eh, maybe four or five. But if in all cases, always, then you can go ahead and score yourself ten. Okay? <laughs> Praise God. Now, the scripture tells you know, the scripture tells us the Bible says, rejoice always. And again I say rejoice. And again, down through some of the other things that we're going to talk about, rejoice is one of the, the big things. He tells us to rejoice in all things. Not just what we want to rejoice in or what, what's going well, but all things through the turmoil, through the trial, through whatever it may be. He tells us to rejoice. That brings me to item number two. We are tested through demands. The New Testament has listed there is this in the New Testament, I should say, 150 different demands that God, God puts on us and expects us to obey. Do I worry about it? Don't worry about anything. Do good to your enemies. Forgive other people. And <laughs> be thankful for everything. Yeah, right. That's a pretty tough one, isn't it? But those are some of the commands He's telling us through Scripture. To be thankful. Be in everything. And again, I, I use the example of, of the people of Israel. You remember the story about the demands that, that God put on, on the people of Israel. They were going through through the wilderness there. That uh, Remember the story about the manna? And how the manna was to fall from heaven every day because that's the way God was going to feed them. And, but God gave him some specific gave him some specific orders. <coughs> he said, I don't want you taking a whole bunch for the whole week, for the whole month, for the whole year. He said, I want you to take it for one day. Go out in the morning and collect it for one, one day. And manna, uh, one commentary re uh, referred to it as is the white fluffy stuff. And being from Colorado, I said, no, 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 I don't think it was snow. <laughs> Manna was, was a bread-like material that, that they were fed and, and nourished with. But he said, he said, take it, pick it up just one, one time a day. And again, I'm sure they had many questions, many questions about, well, this is really inconvenient. This is really crazy. It's wasting our time. <coughs> Every morning we go out and do the same thing. Gets us up early. Come on, God. You know, they've got to be, I mean, they were humans too, so they had to have some of the same goofy questions I get sometimes or have. And so they, 
they did follow. And again, all through, you can read some of the other things that, that they did. And then I think of Abraham. Back in, he was, he was about my age. Maybe, oh, no, no, he was no, he was 75. Yeah, right. Uh, anyway, uh, he was 75 years old. And what did God come to him and do? He said, Abraham, I want you to pick up and move. I want to take you someplace where you can make an influence on the world and the people. And, you know, being me, the first thing I'd say, well, where am I going? God says, I'll tell you. He said, well, how am I going to get there? He said, I'll show you. He said, how am I going to know when I get there? He said, I'll let you know. And that's the way God does. You know, again, that comes, that's where trust comes from. That's when your love of God, that's where trust deeply comes from. When you when you have the faith and then you have the trust that mixed with that faith, that's, that's, boy, that's where it comes from. <clears throat> and, you know, another, another classic example is Noah. For God told him to do certain things. <laughs> I, you know, I chuckle when I read this sometimes because he said, I want you to build an ark. And here Noah was out in the middle of the Sonoran Desert. <laughs> Never rain. Only air, irrigation come up from the, from the earth in the form of, of a mist. And he, it never rained. And yet God said, I want you to build an ark. And I can just hear, like, yeah, right, yeah. Just see an ark out here. Mm, what are the people going to think about that one? <laughs> you know, and the message goes on and on. But we know that that even though I'm, Noah had to know that he was going to be made fun of, ridiculed, thought he was totally out of his score. He had to, you know, all those thoughts had to go through his mind because again, he was just a guy just like everybody else, and. He had to, he just had to know and realize. And yet, what's the Bible say? No obeyed and he did build the ark. And of course we all know what happened. And as the rain began to fall, I bet you he and his family had a, a hallelujah runaway. <laughs> you know, just picture that in your mind. Here they were all loaded on the boat with all these stinky almonds and all this stuff. Here they were loaded on the boat. Yeah. Well, behold, here come that water. They had to have a hallelujah runaway. I don't know if you know what that is or not. Some of you are old enough to know what, what a hallelujah run is. If you haven't, oh, you're in for an experience. <laughs> let, let me trust you. <laughs> oh, praise God. The lesson here, we learn to rejoice continually. No matter what our difficulties are, we learn to rejoice. And we learn to do it. Not only do we learn to do it, to rejoice continually, but we also say, I will obey. And then I pick up the cross and follow it. I do it immediately. It doesn't mean when I feel like it. It means do it immediately. Amen? Come on, you guys are quiet. Amen. Say, oh man, oh me, or oh my, or something. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, evaluation number two. How quick, how quickly do you do what God tells you to do? Do you do it when it's convenient? Zero to one. Do you struggle with it for a while? Maybe one or two. Maybe, maybe you struggle with it for quite a while, but then you finally do it. Three or four. Or if you learn and learn more and more and you do it. You just do it. Give yourself a big kiss. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Point number three. And uh, I don't want to see anybody squirming. <laughs> because it says we are tempted with our dollars. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about money. And he does test us. We again, I can I can cite and relay many, many times in my own life. For God has tested Sharon and myself. 
with the money aspect. And I gotta tell you that every time, every time, again without qualification, every time that we have obeyed or stepped out on a little bit of faith, he's come through every time in one form or another. And I'm, you know, and we we talking about money here, but there's other things that that uh, we need to be ser good servants of, the stewards of. In, in addition to money, and that's time and talents and all that stuff, how we use those. But we're talking about money right now. Luke 16, chapter, verse 11. If you haven't been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will, who will trust you with riches? And so they're asking the question. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7 and 8, excel in the grace of giving. I'm not commanding you, but I want you want, I want to test the sincerity of your love. How much do you love God this morning? Can I ask you that question? Are you willing to put your money where your mouth is? Come on. Many of us are. If you haven't experienced that blessing, folks, I challenge you. Give it a try. Because, again, uh, the scripture talks about <coughs> the people in Israel, how they raised money. And remember when they built the big tabernacle? And they were, they were told to do it. And all the time they had to raise the money. They had to sacrifice to raise the money. Well, in today's economy, today's money standard, they raised $4 million dollars. The biggest building campaign that has ever gone on, I think. I mean, that took faith. Four billion dollars, come on, to build that, that temple. It took faith. It took sacrifice. And many of us have sacrificed. I know, uh, particularly if you've been in church very long, there's been different sacrifices that come. Uh, whether it be a building program, whether it needs to be a special need, whatever the case may be. We've all given sacrificially. And, you know, I, I, uh, I learned that as, as a long kid, a young kid. My dad was, uh, he was a staunch believer in it. And, and uh, he showed me many, many, many times over as I was growing up. Then I know for a fact many times when dad would make a pledge for this, that, or the other thing. The money wasn't in the bank. It just wasn't there. But God said, with the help of God, I will do it. Because I feel in my heart that's what God's telling me to give. And he, now every time, like I say, every time I, he's done that, he showed me. And uh, he's taught me that giving, you can't help give God. God's all he has to do is show all of you. And so we, you know, David also says says it very nicely in verse 14, or chapter 14. Who am I? Because he's talking about after he's seen the sacrifices that the people did in building, building the temple, he says, who am I? And who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? You know, he, I think he's kind of talking to himself a little bit. Who am I? Everything comes from you, Father. That's you know what he's saying. Everything comes from you. And we have given you what comes from beforehand, not ours. Because, again, all of the money, everything that we have in that, that regard comes from, from God. It comes out of his pocket. And if... Uh, where everything comes from you and we have given given what comes from God. Everything comes from you and we have given you what you what comes from your hand, O Lord our God, for all this abundance that we have for building is from you. And he recognizes that and, and he's <coughs> thanking God, I think, in a lot of respects. That thank you for the provision. Thank you for meeting our what we obligated ourselves to do. And friends, he will do that for you every time. If you only believe, you have faith, and you trust. 
every time. 